Hi folks and welcome back here for another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today I'd like to talk about a very simple way how to create a swarm or flood like animation by using MoGraph. Of course there are multiple ways how to create an effect like that, but I find that this technique is pretty handy and it might become useful for you as well one day. Right, so the first thing we are going to create is a cube or any object you like. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm just going to make it red so that you can see what's going on here. And we're going to place our cube inside a fracture object. Just drag it in. So now we're going to drive our animation by using the random effector. So go to MoGraph, go to the effectors and select a random effector. Just make sure the random effector is added to the fracture object. So now go to your random effector, go to effector, set it to noise. So with the noise mode selected you have a very random movement once you play it back. So it's added automatically. So now we're going to set it to indexed, which will give us an nice movement and we're going to bring down on our, our animation speed to 50 percent right so the next thing we're going to add is a tracer object and we're going to tell the tracer to trace the fracture object not a random effector so and you can switch off the visibility of your fracture object by now. Just alt click right here. And now when we play it back, you can hardly see that our tracer is drawing a line. Are we going to um, use that spline? Actually it's a spline to clone more objects onto it. So first thing we have to set up is the movement of our um, random effector. We have to just increase the uh, default position settings to something like 500. So if you zoom out, I hope you can see the path that's drawn here in that screen recording. Right. So now we have a spline created by the tracer. I'm going to add a new cloner. And now you can just drop any object inside. I'm going to pick up a platonic object for now. Why not? Very creative. Just drop it into your cloner. Tell your cloner to be in object mode and drag that tracer into that slot here. Once you did it, you can see we're going to create something like a warm of platonic objects. Pretty nice. So we're going to make our clones blue, like so, so you can see it. And now all you have to do is play around with the settings of the random effector. Let's choose a higher value, like something like four, five thousand in each direction. So when you play back the animation, you can see um, it start just somewhere in our screen. And to control the origin of our animation, we're going to play around with the strengths of our random effector. So we're going to bring it down to zero for a moment. And when you play it back, you see that there's nothing happen. And this is because our fracture object is not moving. So our tracer is not drawing a line. So there is no object for a cloner to clone its uh, clones onto, you know. So you have to start with something like 1%. When you play it back, you can see there is a little, little cloud of... Um, Platonic objects. 
So let's set a keyframe uh, at frame zero with 1% strength. Just go forward, let's say to frame 30 and bring it up to 100%. So now we've created something like this. So we have a warm of a platonic object that starts in the uh, axis center. Right. But we have still not enough particles. So go to your cloner and increase count to something like 200. Now play back. So you see we have a very very dense warm of uh, platonic objects. Right. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to add is just another effector and the effector is called the step effector. So make sure the step effector is added to the right cloner. And when we play it back, we have a structure like this. You have thicker, thicker objects in the beginning and thinner objects towards the end. So let's increase our timeline to a bit more frames. I don't want the pass to be that long. So I'm going to select my tracer, go to limit, set it to from end, and let's say it's a mud. And let's set the mud to something like 50. So when we play it back, you can see that just after 50 frames, the tracer stops to draw its line. So the next, the next step is to add a rigid body simulation tag to your uh, platonics. Go to individual elements, set it to all. Let's choose more dynamics automatic. So let's go to the forest tab and you have to set the follow position to something around 8. So now when you play back All my uh, particles are interacting with each other, as they should. Zoom out. So now you can, fair enough, you can play around with um, all the options of your, of your random effector. You can, let's say, make it 9000. You can, of course, increase the um, timeline a bit. So just play it back, let it, let it go for a while. And then you have to, you, you have to keyframe animate your if, uh, random effector strengths again. So control clicked. And bring it down to zero. Yeah, I really like uh, the movement. It's looking good. Now it goes back to the axis center. Okay, so what I did in in my uh, example, um, I was just playing on with the radius of the platonic object, so you don't see anything in the beginning and in the end. So let's keyframe animate the uh, radius, bring it down to zero. Just go to frame, let's say ten or something. Bring it up. to 100, play it back, Boop. it's 
So, and then just do the same towards the end, like here, like there. Just control click, keyframe, bring it down to zero, set a keyframe, and play back. So and if you like to have a more jiggling jiggling effect in your in your particular cloud here, you can add a a delay effector. So make sure the delay effector is added to your cloner. Go to your delay effector and just set it to spring. The strength of 50% is pretty good. You can play around with it, of course. So if you play it back, you can see that animation is a little bit more jiggling. Well, folks, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope it's useful. And see you soon. Bye-bye.